just to please go on stage. So, raise during, your right hand. <laughs> <laughs> Repeat after Philippe. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, during the last two weeks, we had uh, quite a bit of a debate online. Uh, and yesterday. And as well as yesterday with uh, all kinds of uh, uh, consciousness altering substances. Um, and, and we finally decided, we all came to this consensus that in fact, now was perhaps the time to make a, a statement for the public, for, for people like Barney, who, who are, are not uh, neuroscientists, uh, but who in fact uh, have an interest in this topic. Because as our tools are evolving very quickly, some of the conclusions we have are changing, and some of the assumptions we have made uh, are being discarded. Um, and it might be obvious to everybody in this room that animals have consciousness. It's not obvious to the rest of the world. Um, it's not obvious to you know, the, the rest of the Western world. It's not uh, obvious to you know, uh, people in, in the Far East and other places. It's not obvious to everybody. Uh, you, know, you have been a very, very sophisticated audience. Um, and this has been an amazing lineup of speakers. Uh, not everybody has this kind of you know, um, processing uh, and, and, and access to such data. So I'd like to thank, obviously, the speakers, because none of this would have happened without you. Uh, many of you came here um, from, you know, from places uh, uh, near or far, Australia. Uh, many of you traveled you know, with your own resources. You are all um, investors in this conference. You are all part of this, of this scientific journey. Uh, and so with that being said, I'd like to begin reading, reading this joint statement, which all of us have agreed on. So uh, I'll be reading the, the first part. Uh, then David Edelman will uh, read uh, the, the, uh, the second part. And finally, Christoph will close the conference with the very last part. So on this day of July 7, 2012, a prominent international group of cognitive neuroscientists, neuropharmacologists, neurophysiologists, neuroanatomists, and computational neuroscientists gathered here at the University of Cambridge to reassess the neurobiological substrates of conscious experience and related behaviors in human and non-human animals. While comparative research on this topic is naturally hampered by the inability of non-human animals and often humans to clearly and readily communicate about their internal states, the following observations can be stated unequivocally. First observation, the field of consciousness research is rapidly evolving. Abundant new techniques and strategies for human and non-human animal research have been developed. Consequently, more data is becoming readily available, and this calls for a periodic reevaluation of previous held preconceptions in this field. Studies of non-human animals have shown that homologous brain circuits correlated with conscious experience and perception can be selectively facilitated and disrupted to assess whether they are in fact necessary for those experiences. Moreover, in humans, new non-invasive techniques are now readily available to survey the correlates of consciousness. Second observation, the neural substrates of emotions do not appear to be confined to cortical structures. In fact, subcortical neural networks aroused during affective states in humans are also critically important for generating emotional behaviors in animals. Artificial arousal of the same brain regions generates corresponding behavior and feeling states in both humans and non-human animals. Wherever in the brain one evokes instinctual emotional behaviors in non-human animals, many of the ensuing behaviors are consistent with experienced feeling states, including those internal states that are rewarding and punishing. Deep brain stimulation of these systems in humans can also generate similar affective states. Systems associated with effect Affect are concentrated in subcortical regions where neural homologies abound. Young human and non-human animals without neocortices retain these brain-mind functions. Furthermore, neural circuits supporting behavioral, electrophysiological states of attentiveness, sleep, and decision-making appear to have arisen in evolution as early as the invertebrate radiation being evident in insects and cephalopod mollusks, e.g. octopus. Third observation. Birds appear to offer in their behavior, neurophysiology, and neuroanatomy a striking case of parallel evolution of consciousness. Evidence of near-human-like levels of consciousness has been most dramatically observed in African gray parrots. Mammalian and avian emotional networks and cognitive microcircuitries appear to be far more homologous than previously thought. 
Moreover, certain species of birds have been found to exhibit neural sleep patterns similar to those of mammals, including REM sleep, as well as was demonstrated in zebra finches. Neurophysiological patterns previously thought to require a mammalian neocortex. Magpies, magpies in particular have, shown, have been shown to exhibit striking similarities to humans, great apes, dolphins, and elephants in studies of mirror self-recognition. Final observation. In humans, the effect of certain hallucinogens appears to be associated with a disruption of cortical feed-forward and feedback processing. Pharmacological interventions in non-human animals with compounds known to affect conscious behavior in humans can lead to similar perturbations in behavior in non-human animals. In humans, there is evidence to suggest that awareness is correlated with cortical activity, which does not exclude possible contributions by subcortical or early cortical processing, as in visual awareness. Evidence that human and non-human animal emotional feelings arise from homologous and subcortical brain networks provide compelling evidence for evolutionarily shared primal affective qualia. Finally, we declare the following. The absence of a neocortex does not appear to preclude an organism from experiencing affective states. Convergent evidence indicates that non-human animals have the neuroanatomical, neurochemical, and neurophysiological substrate of consciousness of conscious states along with the capacity to exhibit intentional behaviors. Consequently, the weight of evidence indicates that humans are not unique in, poss in possessing the neurological substrate that generate consciousness. Non-human animals, including all mammals and birds, and many other creatures, including octopuses, also possess these neuro neurological substrates. Now, in closing, I think we should all, both our speakers and, we should, and as well as the audience, I think we should, uh, we should thank um, the organizer, the key organizers who made all of this extraordinary event possible. It clearly would not have been possible with, with your assistance and the assistance of your crew, and thanks for, for getting us all together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The um, Francis Crick Memorial Conference on Consciousness and Human, Non-Human Animals is now closed. <laughs>